That also relates to kind of like with mushrooms. We got a question in the Facebook group about eating mm-hmm. mushrooms. It's not the same thing, but maybe we can tie that in with this question. Yeah, join our Facebook group, guys. Hashtag end of May raw. And uh, you can see that comment about the mushrooms too. But what do you think? Like, I have a lot to say on it. So I feel okay. like maybe you could kind of summarize So it. maybe I'll start and then you could develop if you have a lot to say because... I'm also figuring things out in that in that world of fermented mushrooms. To me, it's kind of like an in-between world, in between the living food and the dead food, because fermenting means kind of like it's dying in a way. But but the thing about life is like life and death is always infused with each other. So when one thing is dying, it's creating life for another thing. So I know there's there's a lot of talk about fermented foods. There's a lot of negative things about it, and a lot of positive things about it. So it is confusing. But personally, I I like to focus on the freshest food. I like all. I like the fresh foods as a priority and as the staple. But I like to use fermented foods sometimes if I want to have like that little extra satiation. Like a, maybe maybe if, if I'm craving something, I'd rather eat fermented foods than cooked foods. Or I do like having fresh sauerkraut, for example. And I do like having um, kombucha sometimes. But. Um, I do prefer always having the fresh foods. So I don't know if it's like a good or a bad thing, fermented foods. I feel like it's, I don't know, even like the mushrooms, I'm still trying to figure that out, but I feel like mushrooms are something that connects, like when something dies, it decomposes, the mushrooms help break it down and they kind of help connect and communicate between the life and the, and the deep earth. Like they bring things back to the earth to regenerate and become life again. So I feel like in a way, we rely on mushrooms and these kind of things to keep us connected to nature. Even if we're not eating them, we're they're like they're in the on the trees. We're touching them, or we're in walking in the forest, and they diffuse whatever things off of them. Like we're breathing all that in, so it's a way of being connected to nature. I'm all about being connected to nature and being in communication with Salute. with nature. So, as for fermented foods, I think I'll leave it at that and let you develop. Yeah, like we are surrounded by bacterium, right? And we don't need to be afraid, you know, it's, yeah, some are a little bit more harmful, like candida and mushrooms, you know, in my opinion, actually feed yeast and and fungus in the system, just like bread and fermented foods can when you have an excess of candida in your system. But there's a lot of, um, you know, Uh, truth to fermented foods being also beneficial like think about someone who's eating cooked food all the time you give them something fermented you know it actually has live cultures like Mm -hmm. how many um you know cultures have been using fermented food right our ancestors and things but that's also because they were cooking their food and we know that no animal cooks their food before they eat it so um we, you know, maybe some fermented foods might help people that are on a bit of cooked. You got to kind of try things out, guys. Your body is the best science experiment, you know, it's the best lab, laboratory for these kind of experiments. But yeah, uh, the whole microbiome thing, I really believe it's a big trend. Uh, I work in health food and I've done a lot of health food sales and I get paid big bucks to sell fermented supplements, you know, with uh, mushrooms. Uh, now they're they're using medicinal mushrooms, so they're antifungal and antiviral and very good for the immune system. But, you know, I, I'm cautious. Like I let people know, I try to get, I give them a supplement, but it's like, okay, this is just the gateway to start talking about what it is that you and I are into. I honestly, when I go raw, guys, I don't do fermented foods. Like I'm getting life force already through all the living, beautiful foods. So, Ahmed, thank you for that question. I hope that kind of uh, shines. And I know you mentioned you mentioned culture, the culturing thing. You know, like uh, fermented foods have a culture, so it's like a living culture in it. Um, that reminds me of, of yogurt, and I mean raw vegan yogurt. So taking nuts and seeds, or coconut especially, and blending it up with probiotics and turning it into a yogurt. And I know Luke Corona and the Life Regenerator are really into that. 
And my intuition tells me that that's a really good thing. I can see that as like a really something to power you up because it takes the coconut flesh and it makes it more digestible and more absorbable. And it's a good way to get healthy proteins and fats. I know a lot of people are worried about that. A lot of people on the raw diet are scared of fat. So that's a whole nother, a whole nother topic. But I just feel like the culturized yogurts like that are something that I would really jive with, even if I'm raw. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but. Yeah, you gotta, honestly, you gotta even go by like your emotions and like, you know, your inner child work, you know, you and I were very um, into the spiritual teachings and things. And it's just so important to say, oh, okay, you want that? Like, it's okay, we'll have that, you know, um, even if it's not the healthiest thing. You know, I think cultured foods and fermented foods are probably one of the things that I would allow as like more of a lighter um, treat. I, I don't call it cheating. I call it like a treat, you know, when I'm helping my clients and coaching them. It's like treat yourself now and then. That'll keep you on this um, lifestyle. Like it'll make it more of a lifestyle. If you go all crazy and you're out of your comfort zone and you're being way too strict, I don't think that you can be successful. I know Dr. Morris, even our, our mentor and teacher, uh, he actually always talked about treating himself to chocolate while he was eating raw. So, you know, it's nice to treat I yourself. Can relate Do you see that. that question? Yeah. Do you see that other question there, Kuba? It's um, fruit. Okay, wait. Fruit, herbs, and dry fasting. Thank you for being here. Ask thoughts on a 21 day water fast compared to 21 day mono fruit watermelon fast regarding healing benefits. Thank you. Mm. Want to go for it? Well, I think water fast is when you go really, really deep. So I think a, a mono fruit fast is similar to like a juice cleanse where you're really cleansing out your digestive tract and your colon and it's, it's really cleansing on a deep level as well, but I just feel that a water fast goes goes even deeper because you're not consuming any calories. So it's a really time where your body needs to rest and regenerate on a whole nother, nother level. I myself, I desire to do a 21 day water fast one day. I have never done. I've done a seven day herbal tea fast is the most I did. And as for water, I did the most maybe 36 hours. And I always get really weak and tired no matter like if I'm raw or not, like I, I feel like my body really just wants to rest. So I'd rather do it supervised in the right condition, right atmosphere. Whereas a melon, 21 day melon, I could see myself being excited about it, having energy and going about my day and just eating abundance as much as I want. So I feel like it's a really cleansing method, but I feel like the water fast gets a little bit deeper that the water melon and the juices can't get to. Unless you remove, remove you all know, the calories and sugar. Experience. From you, you've done how much juicing have you done? Like, what would be the longest juice fast you've done? A uh, ninety-one day juice cleanse. That was under the supervision of John, oh, of John Rose. <laughs> so John Rose, he's really known about juice feasting. It's feasting because you're not really fasting because you're drinking enough calories to go about your day and to have as many calories as you would when you're eating food. So he's done 90 days and he calls it going the distance when you, when you go until you basically cleanse out your whole digestive tract and you are, no longer have bowel movements, solid bowel movements. So um, I did 91 days just to beat John Rose by a day. No, I'm just kidding. I was planning. I didn't plan it. I just did it one day at a time. I'm not, I don't usually like to plan long cleanses and stuff. I feel the body, the body tells you when it wants to cleanse and how long it wants to go for. So I don't like to force things. I try sometimes, and those are the times when it doesn't work out. But this time I just, I wanted to go the distance, but I didn't put pressure on myself. And I just took it one day at a time. I was consulting with John Rose. So it was like a really breath of fresh air to have that guidance. And then next thing you know, it's like a couple months in and I'm like, wow, I'm like, how am I going to stop? I can't even picture eating food again. <laughs> But yeah, that was. And you don't even want food when you start to break the fast, right? Because your body has just adjusted so beautifully. Yeah, and you still too. drink a lot of juice, and you just eat like maybe one meal a day for a couple of days until you readjust mm -hmm. to more food. And I started eating grapes, yeah, and I lost so more weight eating the grapes than when I was just on the juice, which was kind of crazy. Oh 
Wow, that's beautiful. So guys, if you have any questions, like, you know, Kuba is a juicing master, you know, detox, you know, expert. Um, you can actually uh, just feel the good vibes. Like he's just giving so much. You're just, you're amazing. Thank you so much. You've been doing this for like, I don't know, like at least like a couple of years. I know on your YouTube channel, I've I've seen you and guys, we're just here to offer care and support and as much information as we can and inspiration to hopefully bring you over to the raw food trains that train that we're riding um, just by acting for the benefit of others too, like by sharing what it is that you're doing. I think you will find great joy in the mind if it's, uh, you know, an overall sense of peace that you're looking for. I would say, you know, get right on a, a lot a high raw diet the fruits just kind of um they lead to this like kind of blissed state N not like a crazy blissed out state you know but an experience of more peace and so we hope that we can offer you that inspiration today and answer any of your questions so that's why we're here doing this live today guys and I'm excited too to just be teaming up with you, Kuba, because you have been doing this for a while. Um, yeah. Let's see, do we have any other did, questions? Did you have any yeah, thoughts on, on water fasting yourself compared to like uh, any other cleansing? I'm curious your thoughts, Jin. Yeah, like water fasting, when I first wanted to try it, I was, uh, I stumbled across this group. And again, the teacher appears when the student is ready. I stumbled across the master fast system and uh, Gino was a student of Dr. Robert Morse's as well. So I, uh, I jumped right in there and somebody had replied to my same question about water fasting. I had asked that as well. And they had said, well, don't waste your time with water fasting. Jump into dry fasting because one day day of dry is equivalent to something like, I don't know, they said like two or three or four days of water fasting. Mm -hmm. So I am experienced in the master fast system, but I haven't been experienced in water fasting. So that's why I wanted you to answer that one, Kuba. But we do have another question um, and people can always follow up with us too, hey? Like, are you open to people DMing Yeah, you? for sure, for sure. Yeah, I love that.